Hey there, I'm Bolt Super Voltage Productions, and welcome back to another video. This is a bit of a different video. This is a game that you guys probably did not expect or are familiar with, but this is a game called Age of History 2. I might have a few hours on it, maybe a bit more, and I figured, you know what? Why don't I start doing content on this game? I know it might not be something you guys are used to, but you know what? I want to try it. And so, I put a poll up, and most of you guys said you wanted me to do this video to get started with. So, that's what we're doing. I think it would make sense if I went, briefly went over World War I and why Germany generally lost. Okay. So, World War I started because Austro-Hungarian Archduke Franz Ferdinand was assassinated in Sarajevo by a Bosnian Serb nationalist. Austria-Hungary sent a bunch of demands to Serbia, Serbia refused, and the war started. After that, Russia joined, then Germany joined, then France joined. Then Belgium and Luxembourg got forced into it. Then the British joined. It was a mess from there. Eventually, although Germany was able to win on the Eastern Front, they were basically collapsing internally. And finally, the people had enough. And, well, because of, especially because of collapsing allies, Germany had to surrender. So, that's basically how World War I went. Although Germany definitely could have won, under current circumstances, there is no way they were going to win. There's kind of a reason why when I go into combat games, I usually go into a mindset of don't get wedged between two people because you should never fight a war on two fronts. It's never a good idea. But you know what? I still wanted to do the challenge. See if I could do it. Let's get started. The first thing I did was spend all of my technology points. I knew that I would probably have basically no time to do any researching, so I dumped all of them into military upkeep, income taxation, and administration. We're obviously going to be fighting war, so military upkeep is important. Taxation because we need money to hire troops. Administration because it will just make taxes cheaper. For the government, that is. Austria Hungary then prompted me to go to war with Serbia with them. And I did because, well, I knew that knowing this game, Russia would not intervene because of the way the AI worked. I then began building supply camps and armories around the empire because I knew that war was coming soon. I didn't want to be caught lacking. I figured having all these built around the more important areas would make sense for in the long run. I built them in mostly just major cities, but also areas more near our enemy's borders, just in case needed to recruit people close to the border. I then began building watchtowers at the borders with my enemies, that being France and Russia. I figured that France would probably have more troops at the border, but I still decided to put watchtowers all over the border, over all over the border provinces, because I figured that would be very important. It turns out, it was, because not long after that, I started enlisting a lot of troops. Most of them ended up being on the Eastern Front, which actually ended up being a good decision in the long run. You'll see why in a moment or so. I also started rounding up a bunch of troops in the Hanover Holstein area, because I was planning to do a major naval invasion of the United Kingdom to try and knock them out of the war. I had a bunch of troops rounding up at the border because I was planning to go through the Schlieffen plan, just like Germany in our timeline. And then finally, it happened. France declared war. The First World War has begun. I thought it was prepared for the war, but then I looked over to the Western Front, and I saw it. 44,000 troops from France in one province. This war, despite only being me and France right now, was going to be harder than I thought. I panicked and decided to just go full schlieffen at that moment. I declared war on both Belgium and Luxembourg and I immediately began storming the borders. I was just horrified at seeing the 44k troops just sitting at the border there. I needed France to be defeated as quickly as possible before the rest of the Entente could join the war. I figured if I could reach Paris in time before it, that could happen, then the war would be as good as won and, well, I wouldn't have to deal with Russia on the Eastern Front. The Schlieffen plan pretty quickly failed, I'm gonna be honest, and I didn't, it kinda just went back and forth between Belgium, and then finally, it was too late. The Eastern Front officially began, with Russia attempting to attack with their garrisons. However, they all failed, allowing me to begin an incursion into Russian Poland. It's worth noting now that the militia I was planning to send over to United Kingdom to fight there, actually, I had took 15 troops away from them so that way I could send them all to the Western Front. This ended up being one of the main contributing factors to the failure of the naval invasion. Just like real life, the Western Front became a deadlock. It became very difficult, and when I had annexed Luxembourg, I couldn't really assimilate because at that point, I was dirt poor. The Eastern Front though, just like real, real life, had a lot of success at first. Personally, my main goal for this war was to form the Kaiserreich. 
Not only because it gave me a goal, but because Kaiser Dykes sounds cool, and you know what, it'll attract the Hoi 4 players. Obviously, there was no way I was going to be able to fight off both France and Russia at the same time, along with the UK. So thankfully, I was able to get Austria-Hungary to join the war on my side, and they mainly were doing work over on the Eastern Front alongside me. I realized I had a greater chance of winning if I was able to create a distraction for Russia over in Siberia. So I asked China and Japan to declare war on Russia, which they did. As the war dragged on, I didn't really see any reason why I should continue trying to push around Belgium, so I just told them to give me their Eastern Province and called it a day. They handed it over, and Belgium was now out of the war. And now I just had to focus on France on the Western Front. Small problem. At this point, Austria-Hungary was being constantly pushed around by the Russians, so I had to send some troops in to bail them out. This might have been one of the contributing factors to me losing a lot of traction on the Eastern Front. Over on the uh, Siberian Front, Japan had not made any moves, but China had begun an incursion into Central Asia. I was starting to get desperate at this point, so I asked the Ottoman Empire to join the war on our side, to which they did. Back on the Western Front, progress was slow but we were making very slow moves into France. Over on the Eastern Front, uh, things, things weren't looking so good. I had to begin withdrawing from Lithuania just because of how many troops Russia had in the area, and they were still not paying that much attention over to the Siberian Front. On the bright side though, I was finally able to begin assimilating the newly gained territories because since I had lost some troops, that meant I was actually gaining money again. So I was able to assimilate the newly annexed territories. Russian reinforcements had arrived in Lithuania, and boy, they pack a punch. Literally the entirety of the Eastern Front was now just hanging on by a thread. I started to realize that if Russia was able to invade me, everything I had would be gone, so I started pushing for a peace treaty. However, I had to do more work in France before I could even try to even get a peace treaty that I, would, I could even consider good. Significant reinforcements had now also arrived on the Eastern Front, meaning I was experiencing more pushback than ever before. I needed this peace treaty desperately. The first peace treaty I pushed for included me getting Russian Poland and Western France. However, this peace treaty was unaccepted. Although yes, on the Western Front I was now on the outskirts of Paris, just know, I never end up reaching the city. We were now seeing some progress on the Siberian Front though, as both Japan and China were now making serious gains, with Russia now even having troops out there as well. We were still desperate though, so I decided to open up a new front for the French by getting Italy involved in the war. We were close to at capturing France, however, we failed. After several more months of fighting, I sent the Entente in a peace treaty, where this time only Germany gained some Western French territory, just hoping that they would accept. And thank the Lord they did. However, this treaty only pulled me and Austria hungry out the war, which meant that everyone else who we'd asked to join was still fighting. And upon the treaty officially being agreed upon, I just realized something. This war was entirely pointless. Just a huge war where hundreds of thousands, maybe even a million people were now dead. And for what? Just where Germany gained some land out west? It was just a pointless war. And it really just set in with me that a world war is very difficult to win. It's not just something you can, you can't just go pull it out of your hat and just go, oh yeah, I'm going to win a world war today. Like, no, that's not easy. You can't do that. You can't just do that, you know? With all that all out of the way, I figured, you know what, it's still basically a victory, and I still have my colonies because I was able to get them back, and I was able to form the Kaiserreich. However, I figured, you know what, I should do more. So, I did more. Following the end of the war and our economic recovery, I started to do some shenanigans out in the world, and decided to make France's colonial empire crumble by making all their colonies revolt against them. I did the same with also some of the British's colonies. I checked up on Siberia and found out that the war out there never ended. It was still ongoing. And in fact, it will be lasting for a while longer. I decided that with the war now actually probably over though, I should probably begin focusing on my other ambitions, starting out in the west. I decided to check on my armistice with Belgium, and I figured, you know what, until then, I may as well just get as much money as possible. And then, I'll try to gear up for an invasion of Belgium. After a couple turns, Belgium's peace treaty with me had expired, so I began gearing my army for the invasion. And since I was not at war with France this time, the invasion went smoothly. And just like that, Belgium was now my puppet. It was also at this time that I noticed the peace treaty Italy had gotten. As you can see, really terrible. France gained a good amount of land from them, and they had lost control of their capital. So, I decided to use this as fuel for my future invasion of France. And just like that, I began gearing up my forces on the border with France. However, for this war, I was going to need to play my cards correctly. I didn't want to repeat World War I. I figured I would ask Russia to declare war on one of France's colonies, which would then basically break up the Entente. And because AI in this game is stupid, they accepted. 
meaning that the Entente was no longer a thing, and I did not have to worry about the Eastern Front this time. And just like that, I declared war on France. And my troops all stormed the borders. We had 120,000 troops on the front this time. There was no way I was losing. And this time, we were able to reach Paris very quickly. This was assisted by the fact that we were able to annex land closer to the capital during World War One. However, they tried pulling the same trump card they pulled on me back in World War One. Trust me though, this is not going to work out for them. I used a tactic known as throwing all your en men at the enemy and hoping they'll die, and uh, it worked. After a little bit of a uh, trial and error. But after this militia was defeated, they were sent packing. After this, they were able to briefly retake the capital, but that meant basically nothing at this point. And after a lot more fighting, I was eventually able to secure a peace treaty with the French. In the peace treaty, we were able to gain a buffer state out of Burgundy, and also give Italy a good amount of land from France, and also giving them Corsica. With the Western Front now completed and my empire's influence growing, it was time to move all the troops over to the Eastern Front. I was ready to confront Russia again, and this time, gain everything I wanted from them that I wanted to gain from World War I. However, invading Russia is no easy task, so this is basically going to become World War II. I can feel it. This time though, I was confident. The Entente was not there to defend Russia this time, and they were already at war with several states. So I figured all I had to do was reach Moscow or St. Petersburg, and I could snatch all the puppet states I could ever want. At this point, I felt that I was finally prepared for war against Russia and I called my ally, the Austro-Hungarian Empire, and my puppet states into the war. The Austro-Hungarians decided to be a little bitch about it and said no, but my puppet states agreed. We were now getting ready to invade Russia and get revenge for World War I. During this time, we tried to get Italy to join our alliance, but it took too long. And finally, it was time for World War II. The invasion of Russia began with hundreds of thousands of troops storming the border at Russia and Poland. This time, since we were focusing all of our resources on the Eastern Front, I was certain we were not going to be losing this time. However, with this war, I made a huge miscalculation. I thought I'd be able to finish the war quick enough, and I would have my dream empire. And boy, was I wrong. Turns out, this ended up being nearly two-thirds of the entire recording. Even then, the invasion went very well. Most of Western Russia was already captured. At this point though, my main goal was just to capture Moscow, and for now, not invade the South. My main concern with invading the South was that I would waste up all my resources. But after a while, I just said YOLO, and just went with it anyway. And not long later, I was able to reach Moscow. However, I figured I should go further. So I went further, and you know what? I'd say it was worth it, but... Wow, that, it still took ages. The war was going great. However, I received some shocking news. The British had declared war. Thankfully for us, zero fighting would occur in Europe. Instead, it all happened in Africa between our colonies. I didn't end up really checking up on Africa until the war had ended though. At this point, I occupied all the land I wanted from Russia, so I sent them a peace treaty where I would basically gain all their western territories. However, they refused this treaty, and the war raged on. And it raged on so long that the war extended into the Caucasus, Central Siberia, and Central Asia. I didn't really want to fight the UK myself per se, so what I decided to do instead was just ask all my colonies and all my allies and puppet states to declare or warn them as well. And as such, that is why all the fighting took place in Africa. Okay, a lot of the footage is just me trying to push through Siberia and Central Asia and also the Caucasus because Russia would just not surrender. So, I'm going to skip to a more interesting part. For a while, I was relying on Sweden to win out in the northern Siberian areas, so that way I would not have to occupy them myself, and I could continue pushing eastward. However, after a while, their front line completely collapsed, and now I suddenly had to move a ton of troops over there to fight myself, and that, that made it really rough. It went from me being absolutely certain I was going to win to me thinking, oh, Maybe it's going to be a bit harder than I was expecting. At this point, my economy had somewhat recovered from the initial beginning of the war, so I began enlisting a ton of more troops to send into Russia as reinforcements, because of the sudden return of Russian power around the St. Petersburg area. As such, this meant that there was now no longer really a threat in the area, but this now meant also that I needed to start sending my forces back to the east because Russia had made a breakthrough against China. The war was lasting a long time, and at this point, I didn't want to fight it. I had already accomplished my goal a while ago, so why should I keep fighting? And with that mindset, I decided that now was the best time to begin heavily persisting on a peace treaty. After all, Russia was already mostly capitulated, so 
I may as well try and get them to sign a peace treaty. With this first peace treaty, I was unsure if it would work because it was very harsh on Russia. But prove me wrong because Russia accepted it, meaning that I now had free reign over what to do with Eastern Europe. I decided to turn it all to puppet states. Now, without all this land, Russia was much weaker. And if I do decide to start another offensive war against them, then they're as good as toast. If you're wondering what happened about the War of Britain, at some point, I was able to get a peace treaty signed with them. And it turns out, leaving the war to my colonies was a great idea because they were able to defeat the British. Meaning that my colonial empire in Africa was now bigger and stronger. This was excellent news, further solidifying me as one of the most powerful countries in Europe. Hey there, thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe. I hope to do more videos in this game because I really enjoy playing it. There's also actually still a lot of material for me to work with in this save file for me to continue playing and even form an even greater German Empire. So if you want to see that, please like and subscribe. Anyway, that's all for now. Goodbye.